The new Model 2, a smaller version of the Tesla Model Y and probably a better looking version as well, will have a 53 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate cathode. There will be some changes, I believe, to the current chemistry that we see in everyday Model Ys and Model 3s in the standard range that use lithium ion phosphate batteries. But here's everything we know. When I first saw these numbers, I thought, no, they aren't real. This is just a misinterpretation of what Tesla is saying, but I was wrong. They're real. Tesla is really saying it plans on producing 42 million of the Model 2. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. I'm the Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans, and I've reported on the Model 2 many times. Talked about what it's going to be, what it's going to look like, when it will be produced, but the numbers are staggering. The battery chemistry is also interesting. Tesla fully disclosed exactly what battery chemistry it will be using, and it's pretty much said the size of vehicle it will be. So what are the numbers first? 42 million. Tesla say it will produce 42 million of the Model 2. Now they don't give a time frame on when exactly they're going to make these or by what their deadline is to produce 42 million. But that's a lot of cars. That's crazy actually when you think about it. I mean, if we have full autonomy and we don't really need cars anymore, then why do we need 42 million of these? Well, the key reason appears to be the addressable market. Tesla says the global fleet of vehicles in this segment that they're going after for the Model 2 is actually 686 million. 686 million. So they're basically saying we're producing a minuscule percentage of that number, 42 million vehicles. And Elon Musk also makes this interesting comment. He says that once battery chemistry has improved, and he's saying it will within the next few years, one of the key reasons, by the way, I'll get to in a second, it's inevitable that people just simply buy EVs and they'll quickly replace gasoline powered vehicles. A little bit like the way that people quickly replaced old Nokia, old Blackberry phones, you know, old, whatever they were, old Ericsson phones, remember those old things? Pretty quickly then we moved on to smartphones. Now, yeah, it takes a few years and obviously cars are going to take even longer because they're more expensive. But the thing is, when it is so much cheaper to run an electric car and when the price is low, people will quickly adopt them. And that's what Elon Musk is saying. He's saying, why would you keep on running your gas powered vehicle at a tremendous price? Because the cost of gasoline will continue to rise as the demand becomes lower and lower. Why would you continue to run that when you can simply buy an affordable, cheap EV, which is really nice to drive, can basically almost drive itself. I think he's got a good point. What do you think about that? Let me know in the comments. So the chemistry, what does he mean by chemistry improving? Well, lithium ion phosphate battery chemistry obviously has less energy density. Now, why do I even mention lithium ion phosphate battery chemistry? Because Tesla disclosed in the document that is the battery chemistry they will use in the Model 2. There's really two different types of batteries in the world, essentially lithium ion phosphate batteries and then you've got NMC batteries or lithium ternary batteries as they're called in China. Lithium ion phosphate batteries use iron and phosphate and just lithium. They don't have any cobalt, they don't have any nickel, they don't have any manganese, so they're cheaper to produce. Lithium ternary batteries or nickel based chemistry batteries, well usually now they have nickel, cobalt, often aluminium and sometimes manganese or a combination of those. They are more expensive to produce than lithium ion phosphate batteries. Tesla disclosed lithium ion phosphate are the batteries they'll be using in the Model 2. They're cheaper, but remember, Tesla have had a lot less recalls on the cars that they sell and a lot less problems to fix on the cars they sell using lithium ion phosphate batteries. Plus, they can get enormous amounts of them from China, which they do. More than half of the cars that Tesla sell now use lithium ion phosphate batteries. They come in the base Model 3, the base Model Y, and they're the cheapest models that Tesla currently produce. They're the ones that Tesla actually make a lot of profit on too. CATL have built a factory about three kilometers or about a couple of miles down the road from Tesla's factory in Shanghai. It's basically a factory just for Tesla. It's one of the biggest battery factories in the world. The media doesn't talk about it. It's really strange. 
it produces 70 gigawatt hours of batteries per year. The energy density of a lithium ion phosphate battery is around 20% lower than a nickel based chemistry battery or a lithium ternary battery. But this year, CATL say that their battery energy density has improved by around 10%. What will happen is Tesla will build a factory in the United States or Mexico or possibly Canada, but in North America, most likely though near the factory that they're building in Mexico. And this factory will produce the lithium iron phosphate batteries needed for the 4 million electric cars that Tesla plan to make yearly. They plan to make 4 million of these per year of this model of car per year. They'll build them in the factory in Mexico. They'll build 2 million in Mexico, 1 million at the factory in Berlin, and 1 million at the factory in China. So they need to produce these batteries, these lithium ion phosphate batteries in North America to get the IRA credits. It's a big difference, right? $3,750 per car. That's a lot of money in an affordable car that might cost 25 to 30,000 US dollars. Maybe even less than that. We don't actually know yet. But once that car qualifies for the incentives, $7,500, if it's $25,000, that would mean it would cost around $18,000 maybe $17,500. You can see why Elon Musk has a point here. Why people would simply say, why are we driving these old crap buckets? Let's just get one of these new cars. The battery pack will last for more than a million miles. Seriously. That's what we're seeing with these new LFP batteries. They last a long time. That's another big advantage, right? The safety of lithium ion phosphate batteries. They're less likely, much less likely to explode, catch on fire, etc. Now there has been battery fires in China but more than 90% of those have been with ternary based batteries. And considering the fact that now more than 60% of all cars in China or electric cars in China use LFP batteries, that means that LFP battery chemistry is definitely less prone to fire and less prone to problems. Another big advantage for Tesla to use this battery chemistry in the Model 2. 4 million cars per year. But clearly to reach this total of 42 million units, it appears as though Tesla wants to ramp up. Now, how do we know they want to ramp up and increase their numbers from 4 million to more than that per year? Well, we know this because Tesla want to build 10 to 20 million cars per year by 2030. Now, the only mathematical possible way that they can do that, considering what they've said they'll do, is to build more than 4 million per year. Why do I say that? Because Tesla have said publicly within the last six months, they will make more of this car than the Cybertruck, Model S, Model X, Model 3, Model Y, and Semi combined. So if they're making more than those combined, that would mean that they might produce, say, 3.8 million of all those cars, 4 million of this car. That's 7.8 million. That's nowhere near their 10 to 20 million figure. That means they have to produce more than 4 million of these in order to hit their sales goal of 10 to 20 million cars per year, meaning clearly by 2030, they plan on making more than 4 million of these per year. Therefore, the 42 million figure makes sense. That could be, say, over a 10-year period, looking at, say, an average of 4 million per cars per year from maybe 2028, maybe 2029. We're looking at 5 million, then 6, etc. Will they really produce this many cars per year? There's no way of knowing. But clearly, they plan on it. The factory in Mexico will be enormous. I mean massive. It's going to be the biggest car factory in the world. If you look at the size, I mean, the car factory, Gigafactory Texas, it's the biggest car factory in the world. It clearly is, right? But the factory in Mexico, they've bought more than twice as much land, more than twice as much. Now, it is very intelligent for Tesla to do this, to put this factory in Mexico close. It's not far from Gigafactory in Texas, right? Then to build a massive battery factory in between the two somewhere, it's strategically intelligent decision. There's been rumors that Tesla will build a factory using CATL's LFP battery technology, which is the best lithium ion phosphate technology on the planet. Likely they will use the new structural battery packs, possibly CATL structural packs, possibly their own, I'm not sure which one. Either way, I think this is really good news. It just means we have the world's biggest electric car manufacturer. No, it's not BYD. More than half their cars are plug-in hybrids. Tesla is clearly the world's biggest producer of EVs. It means that they want to ramp up at a far quicker rate than what people realize. I think we're underestimating Tesla. Look what they've done this year in Europe. They've gone from 13% market share 
to 24% in the space of a few months. That's happened as a result of simply bringing the prices of their cars down and increasing production. But they're still not producing anywhere near as many cars as what they should be, what they need to be to hit those efficient profitability numbers from Gigafactory Berlin and Gigafactory Texas. By the end of this year, that will completely change. Give it two more years, Gigafactory Mexico, Battery Factory down by Mexico probably, and ramp up production in those worldwide factories Tesla likely will produce the numbers they need to be the biggest car manufacturer in the world. I think they'll be on par with BYD. They'll be the two biggest manufacturers by 2030. I've been saying this for a while now, long before most people had even heard of BYD. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.